This is the GIS News Hour for Monday, November 15. I am Leslie Ann Johnson. In the headlines, Grenada focuses on applying the principles of economics to competition policy and law. Local journalists learning about best practices. And in the region, Vincentians going to the polls next month. Those were the headlines. Details are next. Welcome back, viewers. Understanding the methods of applying the principles of economics to competition policy and law, that was the focus of a one-day seminar at the Flamboyant Hotel on Monday. Participants who were drawn from trade unions, banks, and other institutions examined market structure, the behavior exhibited by firms, and the demand and supply conditions in the marketplace, among others. It was facilitated by Mr. Barry Headley, competition specialist with the CSME. He told GIS that this regional initiative is designed to help the major players in all the CARICOM countries to understand how to apply the techniques of economics to the analysis and enforcement of competition policy and law. He says there will also be a focus on the core principles of competition policy and law, which sets the general framework for what is happening in Grenada and other CARICOM countries. Chapter 8 of the revised treaty requires that all member states have national competition laws and national competition bodies to enforce that law. And what we are doing at the Secretariat is contributing to the development of the technical expertise of participants in member states so that when you all do have your law in place, when you do have your institution in place, that you have a cadre of persons who understand what is competition law and how the principles of economics are applied to the enforcement of competition law and policy. The program will be uniformed throughout the member states to ensure they all have a good understanding of what community competition policy requires under Chapter 8 and what they are required to do at the national level. Some of the issues that are being raised now is just what is the relevant market? You know, what is happening in terms of regulatory reform in maybe the telecom sector or in the electricity sector? How, how do we apply those principles to ensuring that at the end of the day, consumers benefit from competition in the marketplace? Two Grenadian students are now pursuing degrees in marine studies, having secured scholarships from the Government of Canada. It is a clear indication of government's desire to provide the nation's youth with access to higher education and to train citizens to aid in the development of the country. Abigail McIntyre reports. Over the last few months, Grenada has declared four spots as marine protected areas on both mainland and Karakou in an effort to protect our marine resources. It's a new initiative of the government of Grenada through the Ministry of the Environment. To further develop the sector, having skilled, well-trained personnel to deal with such matters posed it to be a problem. For this reason, government sourced a scholarship for two young people to be trained in marine studies so as to return to the country and develop the field. Sponsor by the Canadian government, the students will study for one year in Jamaica, then move on to Canada to finish up with their degree. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Human Resource Development, Mrs. Eunice Sandy David, made the announcement at the opening of a media training workshop on a Monday. Recently, we were afforded um, a scholarship through the um, Canadian government, whereby we have two young Grenadians, and I'm happy to say a male and female, undertaking marine engineering. They do a year in Jamaica and then a year in Canada, and most of the time would be on a ship, you know, doing their ship engineering. And we know, for example, we look around Grenada, we have various marinas, etc., and I could go on. Um, the fact that we've just designated a couple of areas as marine protected areas, Grenada definitely has a need for training and development in that area. And I'm sure, you know, we're probably all familiar with some of the other areas, whether it's agribusiness, X, Y, and Z. So if we are to develop our people, as I say, we need to know what we need to be focusing on. Now, the National Training Agency is currently in the process of teaching a group of individuals that will be responsible for quality assurance and evaluation as it pertains to technical subject areas. P.S. David says this will augur well for establishing standards in the educational system here that will be recognized regionally and internationally. 
Um, we just implemented and is in the process of commencing evaluation of our Skills for Inclusive Growth project. I'm sure most of you may have heard of this. But you need to have that quality assurance and standard setting in the mix. So I trust that perhaps that kind of model is something that we are striving to develop here, where we're looking at best practices, what are minimum standards, etc. Because I believe that um, our media personnel generally have a critical, critical and central role to play. Perhaps the backbone, one could argue, of a country in terms of sharing with not only citizens within, but as I say, the rest of, of the world and the kind of images that go out there, which certainly would have an impact, be it on tourism, be it on the mindset of our young people as they develop. Mrs. David added that her ministry has been putting the necessary steps in place to ensure that her ministry focuses heavily on engaging citizens in lifelong learning. Our scholarship desk is well um, organized and functional and fully operational. So if we are to engage in lifelong learning, one could infer and see that it has to be a lot more than that. So in order to get the right ingredients, the right components, we would need to, for example, within the next 12 to 18 months, undertake various levels of a national human resource audit because we need to know where we are at, where you know are our skills, where are the shortfalls and where should Grenada be focusing in terms of development of its people. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Human Resource Development, Mrs. Eunice Sandy David. Journalists in Grenada will spend the next two weeks learning about the best practices in the field to ensure they produce accurate, unbiased work. They are participating in a workshop which started on Monday. It is facilitated by renowned Caribbean journalist Julius Gittens. The workshop, sponsored by the Media Workers Association of Grenada, in a collaboration with UNESCO. The training is being done in three parts. The first deals with television, radio and broadcast journalism. The second on print journalism. And then in January 2011, participants will focus on investigative reporting. During the opening of the workshop on Monday, Prime Minister and Minister for Information, the Honorable Tillman Thomas, called on practitioners to be noble in their profession. First, you have to be courageous uh, as a journalist. You have to be independent. And uh, you have to be somebody of uh, credibility. But if there are questions about your integrity, then your credibility would be an issue. So it is important that we recognize, notwithstanding the, the modernization and the new technologies we are working with, the, the essentials of journalism remains. Uh, and we have to really live up to that uh, expectation. Sometimes I find journalists in Grenada they treat the profession a little haphazard. And certain important issues, instead of dealing with the issues, they just make, you know, they just write something because a politician may say something and they write about it without making the necessary details. The president of MWAG, Raul Titus, says the training will augur well for the development of the field here. It's going to benefit on your development. It's going to, be, it's going to benefit on the development of your media, media house. And it's going to help to put out a better product out there. We do have our shortcomings, we do have our concerns, right? Now, and we're not stopping here. We're doing as much as we can under the limited circumstances to try to access funding and training to help media practitioners. At the end of this three-week series, well, three sessions, um, there's another program that comes on stream, hopefully for next year, in which we almost have approval for funding for four media practitioners to go off to Carimac for one month to do the summer program, right? We're in touch with UNESCO Jamaica on this, and it's basically signed off a matter of procedure now. So there's opportunities that we need to be accessing, and this is where I come in and I repeat my call for persons to become a member of the media association. Don't stay on the outside and criticize. Don't sit down waiting for someone to bring you something on a silver platter. It doesn't work like that. If you have a concern and an issue, you come into the association and you raise hell and you demand training. 
Refurbishment and expansion work on the Lauriston Airport in Karakou will begin in the next few weeks. The Minister for Karakou and Petit Martinique Affairs, Senator George Prime, told a meeting of the Senate on Friday that they have received the results of a feasibility study looking into the project and all efforts will be made to work around the mini stadium. The first phase is now completed. The second phase has to do with a further expansion, an expansion which we are now told we will be able to get to expand the Larison Airport from its pleasant length of 2,600 feet to now 4,160 feet, which would mean for us two things. One, larger aircraft would be able to land. Two, it is, as is always said, when your airport is now open up to larger aircraft, it is almost like a gateway to the development. But the stadium would now not be moved. All efforts are made to work within the confines so that that stadium, which we hope and we're praying, would not be moved. We are now informed that they would be able to do the expansion without having to remove the stadium. Senator Prime also updated the Upper House on the proposed Freeport project for Caracou with the Brazilian company from Urbaniza. Private company working along with government of Brazil and the government of Grenada have completed their side of things. Should the EIA be what we expect it to be, then I wish to state that we are now under an obligation. Having selected the site for its suitability, government is now under an obligation based on the memorandum to have the land that is to be set aside in lease arrangements put together so that the team from the legal department can get it work going. I say that to say that the new economy that we contemplate, insofar as the free zone, insofar as the water situation, insofar as the aspects dealing with the road construction and all of that, we feel we are very much aware and is proceeding with the kind of energy that we want to see happen. Government officials, members of the Diplomatic Corps, representatives from the various branches of the police force and others participated in the annual Remembrance Day Parade on Sunday. The service included a wreath-laying ceremony. Remembrance Day, also known as Poppy Day, Armistice Day or Veterans Day is a memorial day observed in Commonwealth countries to remember the sacrifices of members of the armed forces and civilians in times of war, specifically the First World War. Remembrance Day is observed on the 11th of November to recall the official end of World War I on that date in 1918 as the major hostilities of World War I were formally ended at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918 with the German signing of the armistice. In Grenada, the parade is held on the Sunday closest to November 11. Some of the veterans spoke with the media following the service. I was up for 40 years. I was do another five years old. I enjoyed very well. It was very nice. I it was kind of rough sometimes. Food wasn't up to scratch because there was nobody telling me no food to ride it. I wouldn't eat it. But it was pretty alright. I enjoyed myself for the time. Well, that's really that when they were over eight, they didn't sit down and came back here. And everything was all right. What experience, um, what challenges did you have in the world? Well, the challenges I had is that I was in charge of the battery, the battery is all in front. And it was very stupid, so we could have looked out for the light, coming at the light, because the battery faces the channel coming in. Coming in with the hospital hospital coming in there. So we have to be very particular if you see anything coming in there. So don't let you further than that. So the experience was good. So very good, yes. No, I was only stationed in the islands. Uh, Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Lucia. Well, I went to Barbados. And where else? I think Trinidad. And, uh, well, after being trained as a soldier in the field, I was trained to be a signaler, a wireless operator. As a result of that training, 
I ended up being an uh, electronic technician because I learned radio in the Army, how to repair radios in the Army. You're watching the GIS 